Okay, so we'll talk about the product B transpose B for any matrix A. You will recall that it is always compatible regardless of the shape of B, so I'm not even supposing that B is a square matrix here. And the result will always be a symmetric matrix A, which there are many ways of proving. Now it's not the right time for it. What it is the right time for is asking whether the resulting matrix A is always positive definite. And here is my proof that it is. And you'll tell me if there is anything wrong with my proof. And the reason why I'm doing it this way is because my goal is to teach you as much linear algebra reasoning as I possibly can. So that's how I'm going to do it. So how do you approach proving that something's positive definite? Well, you consider the product x transpose ax, and then you ask yourself the question, is it always positive? Well, let's see what happens. Is this positive for all non-zero x? Well, let's recall that A is B transpose B. A nice, beautiful expression. The deeper you get into applied math, the more you'll be encountering expressions like this. As uh, relatively recent students of linear algebra, you're not used to products of four things or more. Well, actually, you are in LU decompositions and QR decompositions. But this is a very nice product. Do you see how things, so the way we, the things were originally grouped is that these two were together. But of course the matrix product is associative, so we can group them whatever way we want. So which way are we actually going to regroup this product? That's right, we'll put B and X together. Let's put B and X together and call it Y. I'll call that, that's a vector, right? Matrix times a vector, so that's a vector Y. It's getting a little messy. Then what would you call X transpose B transpose? Very important to know this, that it's Y transpose. That the transpose works like the inverse when applied to a product. It's the product of the individual transposes in the reverse order. So your I should be perfectly trained to recognize that if BX is Y, then Y transpose is X transpose B transpose. So this is, right here, is actually Y transpose. Whatever the vector Y is, this is Y transpose. It's nice how it's almost like this problem was meant to be. It's all working together. So we're left with Y transpose Y. Now Y transpose Y is a fascinating expression. As much as I don't like the notion of the standard product, the standard in a product, here it's kind of unavoidable. Because if you think about it, what it is, what happens when you multiply a vector by its transpose? You're basically adding up there's the, the squares of the entries. It's the sum of the squares of the entries. Does everybody see that? This is y1, y2, y3. This is y1, y2, y3. So when you do this kind of product, you get y1 squared, y2 squared, plus y3 squared. The sum of squares. For a non-zero y, the sum of squares is always positive. Why, why did I mention the standard in a product? It's the standard in a product of y with itself. And when you're talking about the standard in a product, it's the sum of the squares of y. And the sum of the squares is always positive. Am I right? Yes. yes. And therefore, A, X transpose AX is always positive. I want to give everybody a chance to find the flaw with this argument. So I will give you an example of B. Please go ahead and evaluate B transpose B. That'll give you your A. And then for a 2 by 2 A, you know the criterion for positive definiteness. The top left entry needs to be positive, and the determinant needs to be positive. See if it works. If this argument is correct, it will work. 
the result will be positive definite. But if it's not, then there is something wrong with this argument and you'll have to tell me what it is. You have to pinpoint the statement that was wrong. That's B transpose B. By the way, as quickly as I just did it, that's how quickly everybody should be able to do it. Because I know that they're pairwise dot products of the columns of the matrix. So I dotted this with itself, 45, 9 plus 36. I dotted with this with itself, 1 plus 4, 5. And then I dotted these together, 3 plus 12, 15. And those are my off-diagonal ones. It's that easy. Is this a positive definite matrix? No. 5, 0. Do you see that? So in other words, this is my A. So if I, for my vector x, chose 3, negative 1, I would get 0. Or negative, yeah, 3, negative 1. Or negative 3, 1. Which we've encountered before this vector. So what's wrong with this argument? What, you just have to pinpoint it. You say, from here to here, correct? Yeah, I just plugged in what A is. From here to here, correct? Yes. And here, I made the statement that we're just looking at a sum of squares. So clearly it's positive. And that's where you say, wait, wait a minute. Yeah, I said the sum of squares must be positive. Well, that's not true. Because if all of the entries are 0, then the sum of squares is also 0. And you would say, yes, but the condition of positive definiteness is only for non-zero vectors, so that doesn't count. No, 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 but that's for non-zero x. So x cannot be a non-zero vector, cannot be a zero vector. But if b is singular, like Michael said, and we take x to be from the null space of b, then even though x is non-zero, y can still be the zero vector. And that's exactly what happens here. So that's where the argument breaks down. This is the best I can claim. Because y can still be 0 if x is non-zero, if x is in the null space of b. So of course, for the matrix b, I chose a singular matrix. And it's not really the singularity that matters, because it, might be a, it doesn't have to be a square matrix. It just has to have a linearly dependent columns. If it has linearly dependent columns, then there will be an x from the null space of the matrix for which you get 0 and not a positive number. And so the quadratic form A, which is B transpose B, is only positive semi-definite. And if the columns are linearly independent, then the resulting quadratic form is positive definite. So in summary, B transpose B is always symmetric and is guaranteed to be positive semi-definite. Not surprising for something that looks like a square. But it will be, in fact, positive definite if it has linearly independent columns. And it will be positive semi-definite if it has linearly dependent columns. OK, that's a good step towards many of the other criteria for positive definiteness for symmetric matrices.